All right. All right. So, so Jeff, of course, he's sitting right here, so it's even kind of uh, ironic even more. So, but the bottom line is, um, for those folks online who don't know what I2B2 is, five, five minutes. Okay. Five minutes. All right. So I2B2's beginnings. Um, of course, we had a new uh, legislation in 1997 for, with HIPAA, which then uh, became law in 2003. And um, we had the 2004 uh, NIH grant awarded. Uh, Zach was the PI. And we released the I2B2 platform based upon some work that we had done at uh, Mass General Brigham in 2007. And it was basically the first open source clinical data warehousing platform that could really allow the democratization of EHR data. Um, and that made it usable EHR data that is for, for, for research. So the bottom line is that um, today, right, it's explicitly organizing and transforming person-oriented clinical data from lots of different realms, not just EHR data. So as you just saw, it uses, can use survey data like REDCap, it can use genomic data, it can use all kinds of pathology data, et cetera. You just have to create an ontology around it. It's different from OMOP in that we do, or Odyssey, I should say, in that we don't, you know, it doesn't predicate on a standardized ontology. You can create your own and put your own ontology and data. It's both a strength and a weakness, right? Because then you've got a post facto enact or enact, uh, standardize the data if you're going to use it across a network. Um, but it does allow all kinds of clinical data to be integrated, trials data, genomic data, and so forth. Then um, with these curated ontologies, we built this flexible star schema that basically organizes everything around the fact. And um, we have now over about 200 installations worldwide, I believe around 250 or so. Um, it's a portable and extensible framework with a mo modular design, graphical query tool exists, in an active user community, many of who are assembled here with many plugins and tools that are available. And it's all under the Mozilla open source uh, license. Um, and you can pick it up at www.i2b2.org. So uh, three things, the data model, um, organized around a book actually written by Ralph Kimball, who made Red Brick and um, described this. Um, it was a new concept to have these kinds of star schema, schemas being analytical databases as opposed to transaction databases that work quite differently in terms of how they're organized and how they're indexed so that we could do things thousands, many, many thousands of times faster than most transaction systems by organizing it in this way, where an observation is a fact that goes in one long table that could be indexed to be a zooming racing car, basically, um, and can be augmented with custom dimension tables. Um, and that's very, very efficient. And here, Jeff put, um, and this is exactly right. Um, so t searching 100 million rows in this kind of database takes twice as long as 1,000 rows. It's 1,000 times bigger, right, or 100,000 times bigger. But it takes twice, twice as long. Oh, OK, so you get the scale of this. So it was a really huge advancement. Um, and it basically looks like this. We have the central observation fact table has, uh, carries the, the, the atomic fact, which is something happened to this patient uh, about this, given a diagnosis, given a medication, given a, a procedure was done at this time, right? Had a lab taken, had a genomics test. That's the core of everything. And everything else is information about that fact in the dimension tables. Um, so a fact being this uh, patient uh, concept and date uh, associated with each other with a few other bits of information about value and so forth. And then something about the patient, for example, here's a bunch of facts about patient 101, three facts. And then there's a, a entry in the patient dimension table saying who patient 101 is and um, what their birthday is and so forth. And we can actually make this humanly legible by creating these ontology tables, which kind of point into it. 
and then we can actually organize and become standardized as in the ENACT ontology. And so here's an example of an ontology table. Notice the hierarchical origins of the full name, which lets us have various levels of granularity expressed in the concepts, the humanly readable names, and the codes that you find in the uh, electronic medical record or in the genomics uh, platform or whatever you're using. And these basically are operating through the concept dimension. So there's a humanly readable table called the ontology table, points basically into the concept dimension, which points into the fact table, and it's how you choose things, choose concepts that you want to query about. How many patients have diabetes? You go through what is it in the concept dimension, and then you look up how many patients there are with diabetes concept in the fact table. Now, the platform then became organized around what we call the cell, and it really was a beehive. This is the hive, <laughs> and then this, these are all different cells that people build. We built the core cells, and then the community has built many, many other cells that do, do different kinds of analytic functions, um, all operating with the data model, as you can see in the center, kind of arranged and talking to each other in XML. So, now XML is like, really? XML? Don't we have more modern? Well, but this was built back in, you know, 2007 to 2014. So yes, XML. And XML is still used a lot. Anyway, XML. It talks to each other in XML. And um, the um, messaging goes between the research CRC cell that holds the keys to the fact table and queries the fact table, the ontology cell that holds the keys to the ontology table and queries the ontology table, the project management cell, which organizes all the people who want to access the data and what their privileges are and so forth, and the workplace cell that's able to um, hold on to bits of information about what your queries were and how you want to build things for yourself. And these are really what the XML messages look like. They're true kind of XML um, uh, laid out um, very specifically to represent queries, the results of queries, and so forth. And so when uh, Mike and um, Nicolay and Chris tomorrow during the lang large language model and what Zach was showing are talking about, look, we're going to be able to build a query from just people talking, right? This is what they're going to build. They're going to build this XML thing, and then that's going to be operate within the whole I2B2 ecosystem, just like it was built by the query tool or any other software. So that's the key to the entry and, and, and getting uh, data and anal analytics done in I2B2. It supports multiple data models, as we just heard on our last uh, talk. And then finally, there's tools wrapped around it. There's a query tool, and you're going to see that in a minute, so I'm just going to go really quickly through it. It does queries, which are Boolean queries, as well as temporal queries. And then we can come back and show you data on individual patients if you have the privileges to do that. So it operates either in what we call obfuscated mode, which I'll show in one second, or it can give you back full patient data if that's what you have privileges to do. Um, so it can do a data export if you have the privileges to, to export data. And then in ACT, people usually, they do not. In fact, what they get is obfuscated data back, and that's why all of those answers say plus or minus 10. You're like, is that the error on the result? Well, actually, the error is much, much greater than that. The plus or minus 10 is how much we purposely obfuscate or blur the data, so you can't drill into one patient and find out stuff about one patient just by facts that you know about them. Um, we have genomic, Genomic data in I2P2, it has REDCap integration, as, you, as, you, as you've seen. Most implementations are like this at Mass General Brigham. Almost 7 million patients, 3.1 billion facts, allows you to query and then get the data back with IRB approval. So this is all regulated by the IRB at Mass General Brigham. Um, and it enables that to happen. And then there's a um, uh, common data model for both I2P2 and uh, tra Transmart. Um, that um, allows those to be interoperable, and it's distributed as open source, uh, i2b2.org slash software or community.i2b2.org. Um, and you can all go there anytime, and hopefully those sites will be up. 
And Mike, where's Mike? Make sure they are. So when they're up all the time, it's because of Mike, because they go down, he gets a message, he works no matter what time of day or night it is and brings them back up again. Okay, many, many people over the years, uh, I couldn't even list them all. So, all right. Thank you all very much. Thank you.